and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. Thank you so much. Thank you so much once more. And welcome to Adventist Angels Watchman Radio, Live International. The voice which you hear just saying, Come out of our my people, that you be not partakers of our sins. And also the same message says that the message which the angel is proclaiming is an everlasting gospel. And that gospel is saying, Come out of our. If it means come out of a, it does not mean that you mix, no. It says you come out of a, that you may be counted. Come out of a, my people. But there is a change which has come upon the universe. Let's humble ourselves as we pray. Father in heaven, the king of the universe, a solemn moment where I pray that you speak with thy people. Bless us, Lord, whole Father, whole Father, the four winds of the earth, that we may be sealed your people we may be sealed have mercy upon us lord your loving kindness is everlasting you are calling us to come out of our and be separate O king of heaven help us in this particular hour and in this particular time as you are going to be uplifted and be given glory to the ends of the earth father give us thy spirit and prepare us for the latter rain for the time has come O lord for thee to work for they are about to make void thy law. Be with us to the end. Bless your dear listeners all over the world. And let all be done for thy glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and I believe. Amen. Thank you friends for taking this uh, sincere opportunity to join us. Today we are going to look at a topic here. The topic is saying that uh, Pope Francis set up. What is this kind of setup? That's what we want to consider and see. What really is this particular setup in our time? Um, without taking much time, is that uh, we live in a time where if you try to speak the truth, you will be in so, in so much trouble. But we must speak the truth because the one who has sent us has commissioned us to speak this truth to the ends of the earth. And the truth will make people uh, free. It will set people free. I don't know. If you understand, there is a man. There is a man in the book of uh, the book of Judges who troubled the people of Israel in that time so much until it had forced the people. Uh, actually, there is a man who had ten, uh, ten whose feet wa fingers were cut. But before we consider that one, let's see here. Whatever ills befell the arms of diplomacy of Spain were charged to the account of these unfortunates. Who are these kind of unfortunates? unfortunates? We had a people in, in Spain <laughs> whereby the Archbishop of Valencia assured the king that is the state, that is charge and the state, and this is what now is happening even in America in this time. The Archbishop of Valencia dictated to the church, dictated to the state assured the king that all the disasters which had befallen the monarchy had been caused by the presence of these unbelievers, whom it was now necessary to root out even as David had done to the Philistines and the soul to the Amalekites. He declared that the Amada, which Philip the second sent against England in 1588 had been destroyed because God will not allow even that pious enterprise to succeed, where those who undertook it left heretics and disturbed at home. For the same reason, the late expedition against Allegius had failed, it being evidently the will of heaven that nothing should prosper while Spain was inhabited by apostates. So, here is an archbishop, just like the Pope is speaking in our time. He is speaking the very same words which they used in time past to persecute the church 
during the time of the protesters when they were running away. They said this one, th they are the kind of people who are troubling us. So, he was saying that oh, everything is failing us. Ev even the disasters which the states or the nations are passing through the calamities. I what does the archbishops, you know, what did he say? This is 1588 and backwards, uh, and around 1400. What was, was it? The archbishop of Valencia was saying that all those disasters were happening because of the presence of unbelievers. Those who will not unite, unite in the ecumenical movement for peace. And now they are using the scriptures, misusing the scriptures, friends, to misquote the scriptures. Did uh, David destroy the Amalekites? What was the agenda here? What really was happening? Who were the people who were destroying, who were fighting the children of Israel at first? And what was the root cause? The appropriation had closed. Just like when the appropriation is going to close. Who, who sets the time? And who sets the standard? It is God who sets the standard. The Amalekites and those other communities. You remember when the Amalekites first were met? God never wanted to destroy them but they did something terrible when they wanted to destroy the children of israel when they were weary in their way back to the promised land so even in our time who do you see are the amalekites this is the papacy and the foreign pro apostate protestants now they are the one who are foreign because they have gone back to rome these are the kind of people who are going to stop the remnant people of god the faithful remnant people of god who are now going home, who are now gathering to stand for the truth in these last days. These are the kind of the Amalekites who were supposed to learn from the character of God. They are supposed to learn from the preaching of the truth. These are the kind of people who are supposed to learn from the faithful, from the Jew in this last day, the true Jew. For the Bible prophesied that in the last days we shall have true Jews who shall come and follow the dictates of God. Also, in another sense here, we find a message saying that according to a well-known Roman Catholic historian, God himself was the first inquisitor general. Do you see now why they are... This is what is just happening, and we are going to actually to see this uh, very document in a, 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 a very fast way. But before we do anything, let's friends... Uh, by the masses of our Lord, let's see first this news article here. It says, uh, the Indian Express, the new Indian Express news, time to declare war on climate change. When they are saying that time to declare war on climate change, does not the Bible say that a time is coming where there shall be wars and rumors of wars? What is this? Is a time to declare war on the climate uh, uh, climate change or agenda. These are as a result of global warming, a rise in the Earth's atmospheric temperatures due to the increased emission of greenhouse gases. What I is the solution which Bill Gates and other great men of the Earth have said about the green gases? They are saying it is overpopulation. So what do they want? They are declaring war to exterminate, to destroy. Is this not the same principle which Rome has given the people of the world? Is this not the same statements we have heard from the mouth of the devil, misusing the scriptures to do something wrong? Does God regard or destroy? Does, uh, does not God have wrong, wrong suffering? Who is this now who is using these evil scriptures or misusing the scriptures? Let's see. According to a well-known Roman Catholic historian, God himself was the first inquisitor general. In the death penalty announced to Adam and Eve, In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. So, the Bible is going to misuse this statement, whereby he is going to say he has spoken. So, who, anyone who does not follow it, what is he regularizing a death sentence in this time which we are living? That in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. What is the Pope saying? Let's come up with laws. Anyone who goes against these laws and does not unite with us, what would happen to him? We destroy him. The president is found for inflicting capital punishment on heretics because our first parents were heretics. They had left the true faith. 
So what is going to happen? I covered the other message last time when the Protestants were saying that the Catholic Church is now the matter and that they are not supposed to protest anymore. They are not to protest. They are saying that we are all now Catholics. What about those who will take their individual individualism, which the Pope is against, taking your own part, your conscience? You say, yeah, I ought to, I ought to serve God alone. I ought to fear God alone. That, that I ought to fear God rather than men. So, what kind of president are they using? Those those people would not unite with them. They have read the faith, and they are supposed to to be done what to de be destroyed. Have they not misused the statement of Adam and Eve? Again, the Lord turned them out of the Garden of Eden. This was the confiscation of the property of heretics. What is going to happen in this time? Are we not going to miss every other support being cut off as the prophet Aaron G. White says? Or, as the scripture says, are we not going to be confiscated our properties? Are we not going to be surged everywhere like Elijah? Like we are the trapper of the people? He says also that even their properties were to be taken away. Why? Because they are termed as heretics. That did the Almighty made them coats of skins and clothed them. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. What was the purpose of God clothing them with skins and clothed them? The main purpose is the Lamb of God which was slain from the foundations of the world. The scriptures justified the message. It was representing the plan of redemption. It was a plan of redemption. But who is this sitting in the temple of God calling himself that is God? Now he is calling himself an inquisitor. Who is this? This was the model of the San Benito. See Paramo, origin of the Inquis Inquisition, book 1, chapter 1 to chapter 3. So the San Paranitos were coarse wooden garments in which the heretics was arrayed for the auto dafe, the name which to the ceremony accompanying the panning of the victims. These garments were brought close around the neck and descended like a, a frock down to the knees. So they were of a yellow color, embodied with a cross and were garnished with figures of devils and the flames of fire, which the typical of the heretic destiny year after. So served to make him more odious in the eyes of the superstitious martyr. So what is happening in our time? Are we not being set as odious, more odious in the, in the public? What is the universe calling? He's saying that calamities have increased. And the Pope is pointing to us, he's setting the 70 day Adventists aside. He is actually using those who they know that God has commanded us that we must preach the truth. What is he doing? Regretting us, censoring us. What is happening here? So, was not Jesus Christ also said? We are going to see it thereafter. In certain cases, the government was also adorned with the pictures of uh, the wearer. Panning in flames with several figures of dragons and devils in the acts of the fanning, of, uh, fanning them. It's a quote from Prescott, History of the Ferdinand and Isapera, part 1, chapter 7, paragraph 34. Also, in the Antonio uh, Puigirank, translated by Wharton, Inquisition and Massacre. What is happening this time? Is, um, is there not a mask in the land? What are we supposed to do? We must unmask um, the son of perdition, the man of sin. That is from chapter 4. Also, let's also see in this particular sense, uh, in this particular sense here. Let's see. This is a setup. It is the Pope who set up, friends. It is the Pope who set up. He's setting up the people of God in these last days. He's setting God's people in these last days so also let's see on another news article as calamities are increasing he says Maharashtra government allows all free inaugurated people to board Mumbai local trains so what they have said that these people they are going to lose all our properties they are going to lose even at support why because they are not following the dictates of the government because they want to follow their conscience they don't want to follow what they are being commanded to do. What the Pope say? He said that these disasters are coming and before in the monarchy or the, you know, they are establishing a monarchy, a kingdom upon the earth, a millennium, a wrong expected millennium upon the earth for a thousand years. Yet Jesus Christ is coming to take us home for a thousand years in heaven. What kind of kingdom are they establishing? Let's see. 
the Satan. This is evil and evil, uh, evil plans or agendas which are being done in the land. Let's see on another news article. It says, uh, "Assembly mourns victims of rain triggered calamities." The assembly mourns victims of rain triggered calamities. The assembly on Wednesday con condoled the deaths of men, women, and the children in the rain-induced landslides and the floods which ravaged parts of the states. This is uh, the Hindus from India in Kerala. So, Chief Minister. Pinarayi Vijayan called for a united stand in tackling the crisis and extending the much needed support to the king of the deceased. So, a united front. A united front. But they are saying that that is a calamity. So, calamities are coming upon the land from the east to the west. Calamities are increasing. So, from this history, we have seen two things here. So, who is behind persecuting the church of God over the ages? They are misusing the scriptures. From to today in 24 news, it says, Com Comptroller warns that the number of calamities due to natural emergencies has increased in Colombia. This is now America, in Colombia. So calamities have increased. What do you think that, that the churches, the leaders who have united, what are going, they going to do? If you follow history very well, you realize that these things are repeating. Pope Francis urges war religions to fight extremism, fundamentalism. So they are fighting uh, extremism. They are also fighting on you know, the other side who? They are side fighting a war over the climate agenda and also fundamentalism. So we have two fronts here. What is it? These two things are united. To declare war on climate change and also to declare war of extremism so what is the pope directing the people to is just showing them like this pope this archbishop said that these people are the trappers of the people upon the land he says the archbishop of Valencia assured the king that all the disasters which had befallen the monarchy had been caused by the presence of these unbelievers so what is coming is this not the same principle which happened to Elijah are you the trapper of Israel? So what is coming to the children of God, the people of God in these last days, the 70-day Adventists, the faith for 70-day Adventists? What is just about to befall the world in these calamities? <laughs> Let's see. In the news article says Rome, Pope Francis on Wednesday called on the world's religions to join forces. What did the news article of India say, the Indian news? It was saying they were joining forces to fight against fundamentalism. And extremism they were arguing instead for a focus on positive values fighting extremism and the, fund the fundamentalism because they are saying these and believers who are not joining us they are the cause of what of troubles in the land as it happened to the time when Ahab was in the land Ahab is also here who is Ahab in these last days is the church the Roman Catholic Church and who, who is Ahab? Ahab is the state this is America this is a civil government and who is Jezebel? Jezebel is the church a woman represents a church what are they about to do? they are uniting when they unite persecution comes what is the Pope calling? the Pope is calling the world is religions what is a religion? this is churches churches religions to join forces the Bible says in Isaiah 54 verses 14 and 15, they shall surely gather together, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather against thee shall fall for thy sake. What are they doing? They are joining, they are gathering together to fight against fundamentalism and extremism. Those people who would not lower the standards of God, having instead for a focus on positive values such as the promotion of peace, so when you pre preach peace, Promotion of peace. The, my Bible tells me when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. Care for the poor and environmental protection. Who is this calling himself a, a savior to protect the environment? To bring peace. Is he the prince of peace? The end of the 8 verse 25 says by peace the Pope shall destroy many. The whole world shall be destroyed. The pontiff was speaking to a delegation of Jews, Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists on hand for an event marking the fifth anniversary of a landmark document from the Second Vatican Council on Interfaith Relation. Marking fifth anniversary of a landmark document from the Second Vatican Council 
in interfaith relation. What is the his agenda to bring peace? Do you remember there is a young man uh, there is a young man if I could get this Bible right away it's the book of Judges uh, it's Judges or Joshua and it starts there is a man who was uh, who, who whereby was approached and uh, when he was being given a message he said uh, peace or keep quiet so what they are trying to do in this time they are silencing the people of God so the, an attitude of suspicion or condemnation of religion has spread due to violence and terrorism so the Pope is fighting suspicion and the condemnation of religions you can't know to preach against other nations if you other religions if you preach against other religions you are you mean that you are trying to convert them you cannot convert them you cannot preach to them you cannot even convert the gays in the land no you can't that is the agenda of the Pope it's an attitude of suspicion and the condemnation of religions you are condemning gays or this even the moral things no you cannot do it it has spread due to violence and the terrorism for france told the religious leaders so these are religious leaders who are uniting and stay united in the time of the jews against who against jesus christ with that evil agenda second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 says there will be a falling away fast of charges they will there will be a falling away fast of charges and the agenda this is a falling away fast of charges let's see before i read that one let's see this news at core it continues to say <laughs> the world looks at uh, us believers exhorting us to cooperate with each other cooperate with each other for peace and safety and with men and women of good will so those who are of good will will unite and if you will not unite with us what will happen to you these and believers will be exterminated destroyed for they are saying green gases have increased in the land what is going to happen to the children of god to the people of god they should be exterminated that is what they are saying who don't profess any religion so asking us to provide an answer on many issues francis appeals appeal came during the weekly audience as he celebrated the anniversary of nostra aetate in our time that an Nostra, uh, that means in our time. The Bible tells us, and it has been repeating, that uh, take the whole arm of God that we may be able to stand against that evil day. That evil day, that evil time is here. In our time, the time has come that for us we must stand. The, uh, it says on a 1600 word declaration from Vatican II that represented a turning point. That is, what is a turning point? It's a falling away fast. The Bible tells me it's a falling away fast. A turning point. Everything turns. Where are they turning to? Away from God. They turned their face away from God. They were turning and weeping for Tammuz. That is nature worship, pile worship, sun worship, and Sunday worship particularly. So in relation between the Catholic Church and other religions, particularly Judaism, so there is a turning point between the Catholics. So we cannot preach that the Catholic or the Pope is the apostate of the last days, the Antichrist, the man of sin. You cannot preach that one. And other religions, particularly Judaism. So the real and the proper transformation that took place in the last 50 years regarding the relation between Christians and Hebrews deserves a special thanks to God. So they have said they gave them a better test over the last 50 years. They saw there is a great change which has come. Now they are uniting, no more preaching to other religions. If you preach to them, you are telling them you are in the papron. Don't preach to them. That's what the principle of the Pope is saying. So indifference and opposition have changed into cooperation. So indifference, you can never preach again. You cannot say like Jesus Christ came to preach to them, to the Jews. They said, who taught this young man? Who, like they said to John the Baptist, who taught you? Who taught you? Who gave you the authority? So in different side opposition have changed into cooperation and benevolence, he said. From enemies and strangers, we have become friends and brothers. Brothers? From enemies and strangers, we have become brothers? Okay. In what principle? Uh, is as the truth been followed? Okay, let's see on another news. Uh, uh, now, in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, was saying that let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away fast of charges. This is a turning point. A falling away fast. A turning point. Come. And that man of sin be, be revealed. The son of perdition. The son of hell. The son of perdition. What is it? It has brought a turning point against God. Against preaching. You can no longer preach. If you preach to them, you are in a trouble, friends. In another news, it was saying in Job 17 verse 10, But as for you all, do you return and come now? For I cannot find one wise man among you. 
So, what is this turning point? But as for you all, do you return? Do you return? And come now, for I cannot find one wise man among you. The book of uh, Revelation chapter 13, the last verses, verse 17, 18, it says, Who is wise now? And they shall count the number of the peace. This is the purpose he's pointing to. Who is wise? I cannot find one wise man among you. Who is wise and they shall count the number of the beast and know who really he is? Do you return? Where are they returning to? To God or to the devil? To the son of perdition, friends. Job 17.10. Job 17, uh, in another in continuation, it says, Job 17.11, the Bible says, uh, My days are past. My purposes are broken off. Even the thoughts of my heart. So what is going to happen to those people of God who will be faithful. They are going to be destroyed, friends. Others will be persecuted. My days are the past. My purposes are broken off. What happens when your purposes are broken off? You are no longer living. Your purposes are broken off. You are what are also the other purposes which have been broken? You cannot preach to others for brotherhood. You cannot preach. You cannot be segregating other religions. We are now brothers and no longer strangers. We are brothers. We are all Christians. Even the thoughts of my heart. Friends, the time has come. Who is this? It's the Antichrist who is fighting the truth or the word of God in these last days. Also in news it says that they changed the night into day. They have changed the gospel message. They have changed the gospel message. They changed the night into day. And the, this is what Isaiah says, they call evil good and good evil. The light is short because of darkness. Darkness has increased upon the land. And gross darkness has covered the people. Arise and shine. That is Isaiah 61. The Bible calls upon the 70 day Adventist. You only God has known. Come and shout and declare the truth and sound the alarm. Job 17, 13, the Bible says, If I wait, the grave is my house. Who is he waiting for? He's waiting for Jesus Christ. If I wait for my Lord Jesus Christ, the grave is my house. I have made my bed in the darkness. He is going to sleep in his bed as the book of Isaiah 57 verse 1 to 3 says that the faithful in this last days, as the crisis is approaching, they shall sleep waiting for who? Waiting for Jesus Christ, his second coming. Also, in the book of uh, the book of Acts chapter 28 verses 18. What are they timing the people of God in this last day? Who when they had examined me would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. So friends, there is a crisis upon the land and this is what happened to the, this man of God in that time is also happening in this time because <laughs> this is Paul who was being forced by his brethren to join them to be with them in the ecumenical movement, to unite with them those who are apostates, who are departed from the faith, to unite with them. But those usually who unite, who come from the faith are the same people who fight the people of God. They are the same people who fight the people of God. You see the children of Israel, when they were in Pasha, Esther, how they were about to be persecuted. Taos is a good example. The Amorites were persecuting the church of God. Israel, those who persecute God's people, they are known that the saints of the devil. So, what was the church about to do to Paul? They were forcing him. They wanted to destroy him. Let's see in continuation. It says in the book of uh, Acts chapter 28 verse 19. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Why? Because they were about to kill him. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of anything he never wanted to accuse them of anything but so that he can be out of their place so that because they were murderers they wanted to destroy him the devil is a murderer from the beginning so how can you know the character of the devil they are destroyers so for this cause therefore have i called for you to see you and to speak with you because that for the hope of israel i what is the hope of Israel, friends? This is the law of God in our hearts. That's the covenant which God has been seeking. What are they fighting him? Because of his truth, because of the law of God, because he was very faithful, the hope of Israel. It's the law of God to see you and to speak with you because that for the hope of Israel, am I, am I bound with this chain? 
the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 13 verse 17 says and the dragon was rolled with a woman and went to make war with the remnant of our seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ and the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy he was holding the truth as it has been revealed to them by their forefathers what is this truth he was holding we shall know and they said unto him we neither received letters uh, out of Judea concerning thee neither any of the brethren that came should or speak any arm of thee they have not spoken any arm of thee or anything evil of thee or from your brethren okay it says in verses uh, this is Acts 16 18 21 we will go to Acts 28 verses 22 the Bible says that and we desired and we desired to hear of thee what thou thinkest for as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. So were not God these people spoken against? What happened to the Jews when they were in captivity? Esther, they were spoken against, against everywhere, everywhere. What was happening to the Amalekites when they were gathering to fight the children of God? They were being spoken against everywhere. What was uh, the story of uh, Parag? And Param, what was happening? They were saying, Come and cast for us these people. What's the Pope saying? Come together, let us join and cast these people. They are stronger. They are preaching against me so that I cannot restore the temporal prosperity and temporal what? That we cannot have the new millennium, the wrong expected millennium, and establish my kingdom. The devil wants to establish his kingdom upon the earth. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 2, the Bible says, Return you backsliding children, and I will hear you hear your backslidings behold we come unto thee for thou art the lord our god that's the prayer of god that they may return that he may hear them but where are they returning to they are returning to rome they are returning back to egypt the protestants they are returning back to who to egypt friends back to egypt and that is about very great apostasy back to egypt the bible continues to say in jeremiah chapter 3 verse 23 the bible says through in vain is salvation opened for from the hills and from the multitude of uh, mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. So what is the salvation of Israel? What is the hope of Israel? The hope of Israel is trusting in God. In God. The book of about the book of First Corinthians chapter three, which is speaking about the body, the temple of God, is also speaking of the same message trusting in god not in science not in men no trusting in god and the time has come that we may trust in god like elijah trusted in god that is what we need in a time like this when apostasy has come among our ranks they want to sorrow us the 450 false prophets want to swallow elijah the remnant and a minister of them they have changed the laws in the land through in vain is salvation opened for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains Salvation cannot come from these small, small things upon the earth or other things. Salvation comes from the Lord, from on eye, from on eye. Jeremiah chapter 3 verses uh, 20, 3 verses 20, I start the one. Surely, as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have you dared treacherously with me, O house of Israel, said the, say the Lord. So what is the children of Israel accused of? Departing from the Lord. Did not the children of Israel depart from Jesus Christ? They rejected Jesus Christ. They rejected the Savior. They rejected the Savior. But who are they following? Let's see on another news article. You are saying Pope Francis hailed a Savior by Syrian refugees taken in by Vatican. Refugees families taken to Vatican express gratitude to Pontiff for his gesture of hope. What is another hope they are finding here? Hope from who? From the Pope. In rescuing them from response. Who has now rescued who? The Pope has rescued them. But who is our hope? The Bible has said. The hope of Israel is the Lord God of heaven. This is the hope of Israel. He is the hope of Israel. Not the Pope. Not the Pope. Uh, the house of Israel says the Lord. They have treacherously departed from him. They have departed from the faith. Now even the 70 day Adventists, they cannot realize that the crisis in the land is a deception, it is a snare, it is a trap upon the land. They cannot understand that one. The Bible continues to say in Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 25, we lie down in our shame, shame friends, and our confusion. What is confusion? What is this confusion covering them? This is 
For we have sinned against the Lord our God. They have followed the Pope. They have, followed, they have gone back to Rome. And we and our fathers from our youth even on to this day and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. If Ellen G. White was living right now, even if our writings is still speaking, she could have said from the youth, from the days I have known you, you have not followed, followed the, the voice of the Lord or akened to the will of the Lord. Also in another news article he was saying, the Pope as messenger, the Pope as messenger, making climate change a moral issue. Now he's making to save the world. He wants to save the world. He now wants to save the, the world. Making is a messenger. Who is the messenger of the covenant? It's Jesus Christ. The book of uh, Mark chapter 3. The message of the covenant, chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 says, the message of the covenant was to come to his covenant, to his temple. That's Jesus Christ. But who is the, are they calling uh, the message of the covenant? What he was in the covenant? The laws of God. What is he making a moral issue? He's coming to have with green commandments, with his laws, friends. Job chapter 25 verse 2, the Bible says, Dominion and fear are with him. He maketh peace in his high places. So where do we find a peace and a dominion? Who is ruling from heaven? Dominion and fear are with him. What is fear? Keeping the commandments of God. Dominion. These are the standards of God. Dominion. What is this dominion which the Pope has taken over? Who was given dominion upon the earth? It was man. And the Pope is fighting this dominion in this time. He's fighting this dominion which we are given. He says you don't have absolute right. You cannot express absolute right. You don't have absolute right over the environment. Give up individual rights. Give up your freedom. Dominion and fear are with him. He maketh peace in his high places. God make a peace in his high places in heaven. He never even trusted for the angels. Job 25 verses 2, the Bible continues to say in 25 verses 3, the Bible says, Is there any number of his armies, and upon whom does not his light arise? Is there any number of his armies, and upon whom does not his light arise? Among his chosen ones, is there not any number of his armies is there the people of god in these last days god is asking where is my army and upon whom does not israel arise so god's armies are shining but who is this stopping them from light from shining is the pope giving limitations is giving limitation friends what is also say, said here is that for francis assembles a squad to fight religious extremism what to fight the armies the f armies of god who are carrying the panas? What is the panas? The laws of God. They are carrying the panas, friends. He's fighting them. And this is his agenda. The Bible continues to say that uh, how then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? How when they trust now in the Pope? How can man then be justified with God? What well, they are calling the Pope holy, as holy father. How can man be justified with God? How can he be clean that is born of a woman? Holy? You are calling a fair man holy? We are striving to holiness. But when you call your, your fair man holy, that holy father, that is a, a, that's an abomination, friend. That's an abomination. A great abomination. Job 25 verse 5. The Bible says, Behold, even to the moon and shineth not, yeah, the stars are not pure in his sight. When you call man holy, and you disregard the Holy One of Israel, the Prince of Peace, Daniel chapter 8 verse 25, the Bible says that the Pope will be against the Prince of Princes, against the Prince of Peace. He wants to bring peace upon the earth in iniquity. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah uh, 47, the last verse, verse 18, I believe, and the last verse, chapter 57, the last verse says, There is no peace, says my God, to the wicked. He wants to bring peace in wickedness. And he does not want us to expose wickedness to save God's people. See, he says, How much less man that is a worm and the son of man, which is a worm, how can man be now pure before the eyes of God? How can that be? How can that you call man your fellow man? You call him what? Holy. Holy, that is an abomination, friends. How much less man that is a worm, friends. Worm. A worm. And a man who is born of a woman. Friends, this continues. It says in the book of... Uh, okay, it says, it continues to say, indifference and opposition have changed into cooperation and perseverance. 
He said, from enemies and strangers, we have become friends and brothers. Is that so? So according to the pontiff, those who two closest friends from Argentina are Jewish Rapi, okay, uh, Argentina Rapi, Abraham Sikoka, and the Islamic leader Omar Hapod. The declaration marked the path of dis rediscovering the April Rus Christian the earth, says, saying, no to every form of antisemitism and condemning every insult, discrimination, and persecution. You cannot insult in the name of preaching the gospel. That's what he is saying. You cannot preach the truth and saying you are a When you say that Rome is the pap is papron. You cannot preach that one and ask daughters who follow our doctrines. You cannot call them, discriminate them. You, if you do that, you will be persecuted. You are an unbeliever, you are not following them. Francis also said that the declaration was an expression of the church is esteem for followers of other religious tradition. So he declared that uh, it was an expression of the church's esteem for followers of other religions, other religious traditions. So we can follow other religious traditions of other religions and denominations or religions which I call them. And the openness of dialogue in the service of understanding and friendship. We look for a middle ground, do away to our truth. That's what the Pope was saying. Do away to your truth. The Pope concluded by saying that the future of interreligious dialogue rests in prayer. What is that prayer? The interreligious dialogue, what prayer can be made? Can that prayer be had? A question to you. Can that prayer be had? The book of Proverbs chapter 28 verse 10. That prayer can never be had. That is an abomination. The Proverbs 28 verse 10, the Bible says, Who so causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way? He shall fall himself in his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. What is this pit which the Pope is going to fall? This is the same pit which the devil in the book of Isaiah chapter 47, chapter 15, chapter 14 verses 12 downwards, it says that the devil will be thrown into his own pit, into his own pit. Where shall his own pit be? Upon the earth, upon the earth, friends, after a thousand, in the thousand years as we are going home, he will be left here. Those because he has led people astray. He's building a kingdom here, his own kingdom. And he has disregarded the whole one of Israel, the Prince of Peace, Daniel eight and five. And uh, Isaiah chapter nine verse six, the Prince of Peace. is really against him. Proverbs chapter twenty eight verse twelve. Uh, let's understand this message here. When righteous when righteous men do rejoice, there is a great glory. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. So when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. Who is this hiding? The church of God is hiding. They are hiding for a little moment. Why? Because the wicked are rising. So the righteous man has to hide. When the Pope is saying now we must unite, you cannot preach your truth. What is happening? He's saying that we are now about to hide. We are about to hide from this wicked manner of a sin. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 24. <laughs> the Bible says, Who so robbed his father or his mother, and said, It is no transgression. So what are they robbing of God? Is truth. What is truth? The Bible says in Daniel, in the book of Psalms chapter 119 verse 151, Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. We are declaring the commandments of God. And that's why the devil wants to fight us. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17, the Bible says, And the dragon, that is the devil, was wrought with the woman. Who is the woman? This mother, this woman, is the church. He was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of our seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What are these commandments of God? These are the truth. They are all the truth. What is the testimony of Jesus Christ? It's the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19 verse 10. So the church of God in these last days have the spirit of prophecy. Aaron G. White, the prophet of the Lord in these last days. It's Proverbs chapter 28 verse 24. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 24. Have I finished with that one? No. He was saying that uh, it is no transgression, he's saying. But he has robbed. This is Paranapas of this last day of Pope. Who is taking away the glory of God to glorify God? It is not transgression, he's saying, for us to unite. He says, it is not transgression, he's robbing God. When the Lord is saying, come out of our my people, be ye separate. The same is the companion of our destroyer. Is he not destroying us? He was a murderer from the beginning. What is he calling us? 
if he's a companion of the destroyer, who is the destroyer? He's the companion of the destroyer. Says in the book of Second Thessalonians 2, verse 3 to 12, we are saying, in the verses says, in the verses 8 says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his, pr uh, his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. For even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs with lying wonders. So, who is the companion of? Is the companion of the destroyer? Who is the destroyer? The devil. Is the son of the perdition, the son of hell, the son of the devil, <laughs> the son of uh, the devil. So, Proverbs chapter eight, verses nine, chapter twenty-eight, verses nine. The Bible says, "He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination." This prayer they are calling for unity. This is an abomination, friends. No such kind of unity in abomination. What is he supposed to hear? He must hear the law, the law of God. The book of uh, Psalms 94, it says that uh, he must be taught from the law of God so that he can be in harmony. But they are robbing God. These are robbers. Who so caught is, is they are causing the righteous to keep silent, to go astray in an evil way, to no longer sound the Arab. He shall fall himself in his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in possession. Rewards are coming from Jesus Christ for the upright. Also, let's continue to Proverbs, Revelation chapter 13 verse 3. Who is this man the whole world is following? Revelation 13 verse 3 says, And I saw one of his heads as if he were wounded to death, and his dead wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the peace. The Pope lost his power ruling the world in the past ages. When he was giving thunderous ed ed edicts, uh, edicts uh, against those who were opposing him and calling them heretics. So, what is he going to do again? Persecution is coming again. But let's see how he misused the scriptures. <coughs> Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, the Bible says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. What is this conversation which is as the gospel of Christ? That whether I come and see you, or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. What is this that Paul wants to hear of their affairs? That you stand fast in one spirit. That you unite to become one fast in one spirit. What is this one spirit? The spirit of truth. What is the Paul fighting truth? If you, you cannot speak your truth. The one spirit. What is that spirit? The spirit of truth. With one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel the faith of the gospel what made uh, John the Reverator John the Reverator to be persecuted it was for the gospel of Jesus Christ the faith of the gospel but what is these people they have one mind striving against God striving to get against God but not the faith of the gospel of truth this one spirit of truth they don't have if you speak the truth and the law of God, which is the third angel's messages, the three angel's messages in this time, are they to act in that voice? No, they will fight you. They are fighting God. Philippians chapter 1 verse 28, the Bible says, And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. What is happening here then? We are being terrified by our adversaries and enemies who don't want truth, the good truth of the gospel, which is to them an evident token of perdition. Who is this son of perdition? The Bible says, Let no man deceive you by any means, except the Pope come. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away fast, a turning point. And that man of sin, the Pope be revealed, the son of perdition. This is evident token of perdition. One spirit of evil, not of truth, not of the truth of the gospel, but to you of salvation and that of God. Do you see how he misuses the scripture as he did? Just fine. That heretics so-called should be destroyed do you see how they have misused that message where they were saying that these heretics that are the cause of trouble they misuse and they say they were what to be destroyed this is now the character of uh, the devil the character of uh, the devil let's see Philippians chapter 1 verse 29 the Bible continues to say that uh, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him but also to suffer for his sake. Why did Jesus Christ suffer? Because of truth. He stood for the truth, though the heavens were falling. He stood to the last uh, and guile. No evil was found in his might. As a lamb to the slaughter. 
what is happening to the children of God in these last days? Are they not going to persecute us? Persecute, persecute us? He says, having the same conflict which you saw in me. What is the same conflict we are passing through? Is not there a great conflict between truth and error, between light and darkness? And now he had to be in me. What was happening to Paul? What was coming? Persecution because of the gospel. So why did his brethren, what did they do with him? They were persecuting him. So what is coming to the people of God in these last days? He's calling us to depart to the to stand in our way. A relation with Judaism is intrinsic to the very nature of the church. A relation with Judaism is intrinsic to the very nature of the church. Rosen said. So they are against Judaism, standing for the truth. In God's mystery, mysterious wisdom, mystery wisdom, this revolution could only succeed with the church addressing relation with all other religions. So let's unite. Don't be Judaism. Let's unite. Do away with your truth. The message of Nostra has started. That is in our time. Rosel said, he said that there is no relationship, no matter how bad and how poisonous, that cannot be transformed and made into a blessed one. So they want to press evil, blessed one. Even those who are corrupted. What are they corrupting us with? What is pharmacia meaning? It means poison. What is this poisonous and bad? which they are forcing us. It is the same agenda, climate agenda, and also uh, the calamities upon the land and fighting extremism is the same message the Pope is giving. His mouth is a, a double-tongued mouth. The leaders also add words of praise for the Argentine Pope, who are now they praising the man, the Pope who is calling himself a man of his own word. So it's also saying in the news article that for Francis is a leader for all believers. So, who is the, le the leader for all believers? Who is their Messiah and their Savior this time? The Muslim leader, Rasul Lasoripul, told journalists on Wednesday, it continues to say that his leadership is a revolution for all religious leaders. A revolution for all religious leaders. So Lasoripul said, how much is he a humble leader is a key point. A humble? Do they really know his character? Do they really know that he is looking to be given power? And when he shall take power, thunderous edicts shall come. So let's say first Peter chapter three verse eight. Finally, be ye all of one mind. What is this mind? Not the mind of the Pope and the world. No. Having compassion one of another. That's what we need, one of another. Yes. Love us, brethren, brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous to others. Yes. In the principle, Cartius, like Jesus Christ was, but in the principle, he stood for the truth. First Peter 3, verses, verses 8, 31. Let's see verses 9. It says, What is this? It continues to say, Not rendering evil for evil. Jesus Christ was not rendering for evil for evil. He said, If someone strikes you in this cheek, give him another cheek. Not rendering evil for evil, or rearing for rearing, but contrary wise, blessing. Knowing that you are their own to call, that you should inherit a blessing. A blessing, why? Because you don't render evil for evil, revering for reviring. But contrarywise, if it is true, speak it. But no, there is persecution for all these because they hate this character. They hated the character of Jesus Christ. Let's see, First Peter chapter 3 verse 10. For he that will love life, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. You cannot do evil and enter the kingdom of heaven. And his lips that they speak no guile. Speak no evil, but speak truth. No guile. Don't speak evil, but speak truth. Let's see First Peter chapter 3, verse, uh, 3 verse 11. Let's see. It says, uh, it says that uh, let him eschew evil. Was not the job shining evil and eschewing evil? What are we called like Job? Eschewing evil. But what happened to Job? Persecution came. The devil was fighting him. The dragon was wrought with the command and went to make war with the remnant of our seed, which keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Was not Job fearing God and keeping his commandments? Yes. And uh, do good. Let him seek peace and eschew it. What is this peace? What is this doing good? Keeping the law. The law of God. Do good as others you would like them to do to you. If it is truth, you give them the truth to save them. That is doing good. Give them this. Let him seek peace and rescue it. 
how do we find peace? Isaiah 48 verses 18 and 19. He says, Oh, that thou art hearkened thy com my commandments, then art thy peace been as a river. What is this peace? Doing good. That's the principle of the law of God, that what you expect from others, do it to them also. Give them the truth. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So when even the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, and the Pope is saying, let's unite for all this. Do not be preaching your truth. And the eyes of the Lord are against those who do evil. If you unite and be doing this evil, what will happen? The Lord will come like in Sodom and Gomorrah and destroy these people. First Peter chapter 3 verse 13, when probation crosses, the Bible says the wicked are destroyed because of their own wickedness. And who is it that will harm you if you will be followers of that which is good? Who will judge you? Who will harm you? Friend, do good and go your way. But Jesus Christ, when probation crosses, as it crossed for the Amalekites, for the Philistines, their probation was closed. What will happen? The Lord is coming to judge the world, friends. First Peter 3 verse 14, the Bible says, uh, But, and if you suffer for righteousness, sick, happy are you, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Do not be troubled of their terror. What is this, their terror? Do not be troubled if you suffer for righteousness sake. If you ask you evil and they be angry, happy are you, and be not be afraid of their terror. Neither be yet troubled when they are coming that they don't preach this truth. Keep quiet, keep silent. There's that king who said, to the, that leader from Ephraim, he said, keep silent. So he had to, he nailed him. In where? He nailed him. Uh, in that house, there was a king who said, keep silent. Let's continue to s in First Peter chapter 3, First Peter chapter 3, verses uh, 15. Verse 15, I'm about to end up. He says that, uh, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to, the, to everyone that asketh you, a reason of the hope that is in you with the meekness and the fear. So Pope is against those who are going to give answers to those who are asking them. Do not preach to them. If you are preaching to them, you are saying that you have the truth. You don't preach to them. Not preach to them. That's the rationale here. Also, I'm about to end up. First Peter chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, Having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, for giving the reason of your faith, and of evil doers, they may be ashamed, that falsely accuse your, your good conversation in Christ. Who is this who is accusing us? Who is a man of the destroyer, companion of the destroyer? It's the poor friends. And also it's the man of the destroyer who is to be ashamed. Who is accusing us? Who was accusing Job? The devil. Who is accusing us in this last day? The vicegerent of the devil. Let's see. In the first Peter chapter 3, first Peter chapter 3, verses uh, what is their agenda? We have said this one is there against those who keep the commandments of God. If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus says. And the dragon, the devil was wrought with the woman. You have seen that one already. Yes, the patience of the saints, yet they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. They are against the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What is they are giving to the world to save the climate and the agenda? They are agitating to give a Sunday. They are calling in the Lord this day to find time to be with him. That man is saying that the first day is Sunday is a day of worship. But God says the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But the Pope calls it that it is a Jewish Sabbath. Oh friends, Exodus chapter 10 verse 8 to 11 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Sixth day shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But if they do not hear this message, they are going to be contemptible. They are going to be weighed and found wanting. And uh, the Bible says, And the men of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life. Daniel chapter 3 verse 2. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Have we not heard the same message of shame? Who are these going to be shamed? To shame and everlasting contempt. What is this shame we have said from the book of uh, First Peter? What is this particular shame which they shall find? What is this shame they shall find? To everlasting shame and everlasting contempt. 
Okay, the Bible says, as of evil doers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you of good conversation in Christ. What is this? Uh, what is this they are speaking upon? What is this they are going to be ashamed? Because they did not keep the commandments of God. So in the last scene, when the Lord will come, there is contempt and a shame. Uh, to shame everlasting contempt, friend. For, for they disregarded, they never wanted the laws of God. They were fighting us. They were looking for us. The Bible says it is time. When they are saying that it is time now for them to unite, the Lord is saying also in a time, it is time for you, Lord, to work, for they have made void your law. So as they are saying it is time, that name, that name, it was saying um, evil against us. But a time is coming for them to be, to find their faith. It says, a character, as character develops, 70 day events now here is where there is a problem. When the crisis has come, the messages they have been receiving ever, the messages 70 day Adventists have been receiving ever, they are repelled and they are going against it in this time which we are living. And this is now the message which the Lord gives us in this time. When they are repaired and gone away, God will also have a remnant who will speak this truth. They have stopped advocating that the body is the temple of God. That, that the three angels' messages which calls us to glorify God in our body. Glorify God because we have been bought with a price. We have been redeemed by the Lamb. They are against that message. Let's see in this, new, in this message here. It says that uh, as character develops, men and women will take their positions. For various circumstances brought to bear upon them will cause them to reveal the spirit which prompt them to action. So as character is developing among churches, the time has now come that character must be known. What is this going to enable them to reveal their character? And what kind of spirit they are? Everyone will reveal the character of the pando with which he is binding himself, either to the Pope or to the devil. Or the wheat, and the wheat is being pounded out for the heaven in Ghana. Those of heaven in Ghana, those of heaven in Ghana, they know that this is not our home. Our home is in heaven. The true people of God are now pulling apart, and the tears are being pounded in pandos to pan. The people of God are now pulling apart. They are seeing that now, very soon, like, like uh, David, who the Pope was saying that uh, he was justified to destroy. He is now going to run to the mountains like Job, like uh, David ran to the mountains. <laughs> the Pope forgot about this one. The attack bishop forgot about this message. They are pulling apart. The true people of God are now pulling apart. Did not David pull apart as they are being pounded up to pan? Decided position would be taken. Did not David pull apart? Yes. David did pull, did pull apart and he was hiding. He was hiding, friends. He was hiding that David had done the feast in, and to the Amalekites. No, friends. David was running for his life. That was a battle. The Bible says in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his mighty. Take on the whole arm of God to may wrestle against that evil day which is coming. This is the day which has come here. The Pope is calling this extremism, violence. Friends, Satan will work with his mastery power to separate the soul from God. We hear the different, different voices sounding from every quarter that our attention shall be taken from the true issue in this time. The Pope is diverting us from the true time to proclaim the message and call people and telling them the end is come, the end is near. And let there not be confusion or apprentice voices to misguide and mislead some astray the Pope is calling for peace and safety peace 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 to say peace peace to these souls who have long resisted the voice of the true shepherd that you are uniting to say peace peace to these souls who have long resisted the voice of the true shepherd who have contented long against the omnipotence is to quiet their consciences to the sleep of death Will man in his pride forsake his own interest by cherishing thoughts or doings, deeds opposed to the mind and the spirit of God? God has been pleased to show me that men who ought to know the voice of the true shepherd will be more ready to accept the voice of a stranger. The seventy day Adventists are following the path, the different paths, because many, many in this uh, poison, taking poison, President 19. They are following the voice of the stranger, the Pope, as the angel of light, the messenger of light going before them. 
and for in unsafe forbidden parts because of the stubbornness of their human nature. Friends, this prophecy and is happening just before us. The church is sleeping. The virgins are sleeping. It is midnight. Awake. Awake, friends. It is midnight. It's very midnight, friends. It's midnight. It continues to say that before the great trouble such as has never been since there was a nation shall come upon the world, those who have farted and who would ignorantly lead in unsafe paths will reveal his will reveal this before the uh, real vital test comes. The real proving comes so that whatsoever they may they may say will not be regarded as voicing the true shepherd. The time has come. We have known through this crisis, God is gathering his own people from east and west, yet God's people, professed people, are sleeping. It continues to say that God's love is represented in our day as being of such a character as would forbid easy destroying the sinner. As forbid easy destroying sinner. As would forbid easy destroying sinner. Men reason from their own low standard. The Pope is reasoning from his low standard of right and justice. Thou thoughtest that I was or to get a such an one as thy serve, Psalms 50 verse 21. They think, the Pope is thinking that God is like him. They measure God by themselves. They reason as to how they could act under the circum circumstances and decide God will do as they imagine they could do. Manuscript 5, 18, 76. So they are saying, you know, God understands this crisis. Just take the prick, take the poison. God understands the circumstances. They think that God will be for their part. They would not come to the standard of God. It continues to say, when ministers, farmers, merchants, lawyers, great men and professed good men shall cry peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh. Rook, Rook, St. Rook reports the words of Christ, that the day of God comes as a snare. Is a snare? Is this not the same message we have shared now and then? The pestilence 19 snare, Psalms 91 verse 3 says, as a noisome pestilence comes like a snare. <laughs> St. Luke also points the same message, says, the Rook reports the words of Christ, that the day of God comes as a snare, the figure of an animal, prowling in the woods for prey. The Pope is, fight, is hunting woods for prey, and lo, suddenly, he is entrapped in the Concealed snare of the forward. It is concealed. The Sunday law is coming concealed. It's making its way in darkness. Manuscript 5, 1876. People, the church has been entrapped. It was a setup. It was a setup, friends. It was a setup. Lastly, Satan is constantly at work to make as forbidding as possible the establishment of God in our world. Satan is fighting the establishment of God in our world. There will be difficulty to obstruct the work of God. The Pope is saying you cannot preach. Freedom of speech has limits, he says. For Satan, through his mastery power, will use and consecrated arts to present the characters of the professory people of God to the world as a stumbling block. He's setting us up. It was a setup, a snare. President 19, as a snare shall it come to the ends of the earth? It is a snare. It was a, is telling us, telling the world, no, these people are preaching the truth. They cannot unite with us. They are a stumbling block for our millennium of peace and safety. So the precious truths which they hold are not practiced in their lives. The 70 day Adventist, the crisis has come here to test us about heresy practice. Did they follow the truth? No. They have been found that they never practice the precious truths which they are holding. They never practice. They have been found naked. Where there are those who will advance, there are others who think so much of their individual selves that they cannot see that which needs to be done at the right time. They don't see what is happening. Their eyes are closed. They are blind around the care. They are lukewarm. There is no harmony or spirit of action. They cannot unite to fight. The message is coming from uh, the poor. We see the poor. Who is the poor? Friends, who is the poor? Was not Aaron G. White a prophet? What is the message being called in this time? Come over and help us. The message which came to Meros, the angel of the Lord, it was saying, Cast ye Meros, became we, because he never came for the help of the Lord. For the help of the Lord against the mighty, there is a movement which is forming. 
God is calling for people to come together, unite, and fight this war. It's a spiritual warfare, friend. There is no armor, no spirit of action. They magnify the difficulties. They are not uniting. But as those who seek to carry out God's plans advance, the great mountain becomes a plain. The great mountain is going to fall. Our help does not come from mountains or hills. It comes from the Savior, from God of heaven. Oh, friends. Oh, friends. Help comes from the God of heaven, the creator of the universe. Who will you obey? Obey God rather than man, friends. Obey God rather than man. Who will you obey? Will you obey the voice of man? The test is here. No, ye no, that he, to whom you yield yourself servants to obey. He servants you are to whom you obey. What of sin unto death? Or of obedience unto righteousness? What's righteousness? Psalms 119 verses 174 and 172 says, Oh, the commandments are righteousness, which is given to us through the strength of Jesus Christ. Are you going to follow Sunday worship, which is not a commandment from God, or are you going to follow the fourth commandments? Exodus 20 verse 8, which says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. They shall know that the Lord sanctifies us, sanctifies, does sanctify us. Also, who are you going to follow? Whose voice will you follow? The test has come upon mankind. Which voice will you follow? Is the big question. Which, when the Pope is saying that freedom of speech has limits. When people are forcing conscience, who will you follow? Will you follow this pharmacia? Will you follow this poison witchcraft? Because pharmacia is mean sorcery. By this is sorcery, some we said in Revelation chapter 21. Uh, Chapter 21, verse 20, it says that this sorcery has deceived the whole world. And the Pope is saying freedom of speech has limits. Clement Sunday, an opportunity for churches to act for creation. It was all about Sunday. Unity, friends. This is supposed to be the season of creation. So the Pope is recreating the world and giving the world a day for them to observe. Pope Francis says evolution and recreation both are right. Pope Francis cautions. Cautions Cautions against portraying God as a magician and say it is possible to believe in evolution and recreation. So the Pope say you can follow evolution. Don't follow God. He has a double tongue. A double tongue. And you know who has a double tongue? It's the devil, friends. Uh, it's the devil, friends. Uh, it says here, and they watched him. What the Pope uh, is all doing here is that he has set a trap to catch us. To catch the people of God. What did they do to Jesus Christ? They were trapping him. They were spying. Spies are here. Censor on the internet. Everywhere. Spies even in what we proclaim. Spies everywhere we walk. Spies if we are following certain mandates or not. Spies everywhere. Is Jesus Christ following the law? Is Jesus Christ doing this? Spies. Let's see. Luke chapter 20 verse 20. The Bible says, And they watched him and sent forth spies we should feign themselves just men that they might take hold of his words that so they might deliver him onto the power and authority of the governor so is this not what is happening in our time yes petroleum in the presidency 19 he started with the petroleum it is petroleum it is all about petroleum Let's say in, in Job chapter 18, verse 3, the Bible says, Wherefore are we counted as beasts and reputed divine in your sight? Where are we being counted as beasts which are to be breeded, cross breeding, and we are being counted as vile in thy sight, as the cause of trappers upon the land? O God of heaven, help us. This uh, deception in this last, it was a setup. Thank you so much, friends, for taking your time to be with us. This is Adventist and just watching a radio until we meet again thank you so much for your time and my name is evangelist king osiemo find us on facebook on twitter on youtube prepare for jesus christ's second coming be faithful my brother my sister be faithful let's humble ourselves as we pray father in heaven the king of the universe thank you for this hour you have spoken prepare us for thy second coming let all be done for thy glory be with us to the end O king of heaven it was a setup. It was a snare to the ends of the world. As you have said in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29, and Ecclesiastes 9, that there is a woman with snares and traps. O oh Lord, help us to escape. The snare shall be broken, and we shall escape. Give us thy spirit. 
awaken us lord in jesus name we pray amen goodbye and thank you for your time bye my name is evangelist king osiemu let's stay connected call us peace be with you